Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel I'll show you how you can replace the hot end cooling fan or the parts cooling fan on your 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so there comes a point in every fan's life where it reaches the end of its journey. It loses its motivation. It loses its cool. And when that happens, you'll find yourself wanting to spend more time with a new fan. Maybe you want to purchase a better quality fan than the one you're replacing. Maybe you want one that's quieter, or one that has a longer lifespan. A lot of the 40mm square, 10mm deep axial fans, commonly referred to as 4010 fans, which are included as standard equipment on 3D printers, use what are called oiled bushings, or sleeve bearings. Essentially, it's a stationary metal tube with a bit of oil in it that the fan's shaft fits into. And over time, the oil can break down and gum up, or the sleeve can wear out, and when this happens, the fan can have a hard time starting, or in the case of a worn sleeve, it can start vibrating as it spins, making an obnoxious groaning sound. So it's likely that you'll want to use a better quality fan, one with dual ball bearings instead of sleeve bearings. Now, the fans with the ball bearings are typically rated for a much longer service life, and they're rated for continuous service. Fans with sleeve bearings aren't really designed for 24-7 operation, yet they're typically used as hot end cooling fans. So if like me, you tend to leave your printers on all the time. That hot end fan is running all the time, even when the hot end isn't hot. When you get a replacement fan from your printer's manufacturer, it will, or should, include leads long enough to reach all the way back to where the original plugs in. So for something like an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, the fan leads will probably be about a meter long. And to replace the fan, you have to fish those leads through the mesh cable sleeve from the hot end all the way down to the electronics box in order to plug it in. Now this is by no means an impossible task, but it can be a bit of a pain. But if you choose to replace the fan with something other than a direct replacement from your printer's manufacturer, you'll probably find that the leads are usually in the range of about 30 centimeters long. And that's too short to reach all the way back to the electronics box. So in these cases, you'll find yourself needing to splice into the cable which provides power for the fan that you're replacing. Now, you could just cut the wires and solder the fan's leads positive to positive and negative to negative and use a bit of heat shrink tubing to cover the solder joints, but then you'd have to do that again the next time you had to replace the fan. So another way, a better way, is to crimp connectors onto the old fan's leads, which reach all the way down to the electronics box, and the leads on the new fan, so that you can just plug the new one in. And the next time it happens, replacing the fan is a matter of unplugging the old one and plugging a new one in right there at the hot end. And if you do this for both the hot end fan and the parts cooling fan, you may find it easier to work on the hot end of, say, an Ender 3. Because you can just unplug the connectors for the two fans that are mounted on that fan shroud and set that whole assembly aside. And also, these mesh cable sleeves are great at hiding those connectors, so it's not going to look awful when you're done. So my trusty Ender 3 is going to be our patient today as we get into the fan service portion of today's episode. So here's what we're going to need for this procedure. We'll need a replacement 4010 fan with dual ball bearings. Now, I've been using these Winsen fans and I've had pretty good luck with them. Plus, they seem quieter than the stock fans. So make sure that you get a fan that matches the voltage of the fan that you're replacing. If you have a 12 volt printer, use a 12 volt fan. If you have a 24 volt printer, use a 24 volt fan. Now, if you want to use a 12 volt fan on a 24 volt printer, you can use a buck converter to reduce the printer's 24 volt power down to 12 volts for the fan. Now we'll also need these two pin JST-SM crimp connectors. I'm using this 300 piece kit and I like the JST-SM connectors because they're designed to be used as inline connectors and they lock together so you don't have to worry about them coming disconnected. And to crimp those connectors, we're gonna need a crimping tool and I'm using this IWIS IWS2820M. This is not a ratcheting crimping tool. I don't generally like the ratcheting kind for these connectors because I tend to crush the connectors when I use them. Now we're also going to need a pair of flush cutters, and I seem to get a pair of these with every printer that I get. And then we're going to need some hex drivers to deal with the screws on the fans and the fan shroud. I'm cheating a little and I'm using an electric screwdriver with some Torx bits. I've got some hex bits on order, but they're not here yet. And lastly, we're going to need some zip ties. 
Some of these will be for temporary use and some we're going to be for, well, I was going to say permanent use, but at some point in the future we may need to snip them off. So let's just say that these are for less temporary use. So these are the parts and the tools that we're going to use. Now here's a quick overview of the steps that we're going to follow. We're going to cut the leads off of the old fan. We're going to cut the connector off of the end of the new fan. We'll crimp the pin type connectors onto the new fan and then we'll crimp the socket type connectors onto the leads that we clipped off of the old fan. Then we're going to snap the crimped connectors into their plastic housings. And we'll do that for both of the fans here, the hot end fan and the parts cooling fan, because I'm going to need to replace that parts cooling fan at some point. So I'm just going to cut the leads and then add the connectors in place. All right, let's get to it. Now, for safety, the first thing that I need to do is make sure that the printer is off. Then I'm going to cut the zip ties, securing the mesh sleeve down here at the hot end. Now I'll use a new zip tie to keep it bunched up back here, out of the way. I'll remove that zip tie later when I'm finishing up. Next, I'm going to remove the four screws securing the parts cooling blower and the duct to the side of the fan shroud. And I'll set those screws and the duct aside. And then I'll just let the blower hang there for a bit. Then I'll remove the two screws securing the fan shroud to the X carriage. And with the shroud free of the carriage, I'm going to remove the four screws that secure the 4010 fan to the inside of it. Then I can set the screws and the fan shroud off to the side. Now, these two fans are just kind of hanging here. I'm going to work on the hot end fan first since I actually want to replace it. I want to preserve as much length as I can on the leads, so I'm going to cut them off right here flush with the body of the fan. The old fan is now officially retired. Then I'm going to use the flush cutters again to strip about two millimeters of insulation from the leads. Now, a lot of times these crimp connectors will work without having to do this. The crimping process forces the metal bits to curl over and grab the wire, and the metal bits will usually force their way through the insulation and down into the actual wire. But sometimes this doesn't happen. Either the insulation is too thick, or the crimping force is not sufficient for the metal to get all the way through the insulation. So if you don't have a lot of practice crimping, you'll definitely get a better result by removing a little bit of the insulation first. So to do this, I'm just pinching the insulation a little bit with the flush cutters and then pushing it off the end of the wire. If you don't feel confident doing it this way, you could use some actual wire strippers, but I find the flush cutters easy enough to use on these thin wires. So with a few millimeters of wire exposed on the positive and negative leads, I'm going to twist each one a little bit to keep those strands together. Now since this is the side of the connection which provides power, I'm making this side the socket side of our connectors. I don't want anything to be able to short circuit the power and ground leads, so it's a good idea to have these to be more protected. The leads going to the replacement fan are going to have the pin side of the connectors. Okay, so I'm going to get two of the socket type crimp connectors. All the connectors are on these metal strips, so you just bend them back and forth a few times and they come right off. Now there are probably a million different ways and opinions on how to crimp connectors, and I'm going to show you how I do it, so now it'll be a million and one ways. I'm going to lay the wire in the connector, and I'm doing it so that the end of the insulation just comes up to this second shorter set of sides. And then I'm going to try and crimp the connector onto the bare part of the wire. Now I want to do this tight enough to hold onto the bare part of the wire, but not so tight that it just crushes the connector flat. This keeps the connector electrically secure. And I think I've accomplished that. So now I'm going to crimp the second part of the connector, and this part grabs onto the insulation to keep the connection physically secure. Now I'll repeat that process for the other wire. There, now I have the two socket type connectors on the leads which provide power to the hot end fan. Next, I need to crimp the pin type connectors onto the leads of the new fan itself. So if the fan that you bought has a connector on it already, that'll have to be snipped off. It seems that when fans do include a connector, it's the kind that plugs into the printer's main board and that won't work here. So I'll follow the same process. I'll snip the connector, I'll split the wires, strip the ends, and crimp the pins. Now it's time to get the pins and sockets inserted into the plastic housings. Now it doesn't matter if you want to put the red wire on the left or the right side of the housing, but you should make sure that when you plug the connectors together, the red wire connects to the red wire and the black wire connects to the black wire. And 
You should keep that consistent for the hot end fan connection and for the parts cooling fan connection. So these should just slide in. Now there is a particular way that they go in. There is a small tab on one side that's designed to keep the connector inside the housing. If you insert the connector and it doesn't stay in, check that it's not the wrong way around. Sometimes you may need to provide a little extra encouragement with maybe a small screwdriver to get them to click into place. So now I've got the connectors done for the hot end fan and I'm going to plug them together. At this point, it might be a good idea to turn the printer on just to make sure that the fan spins and that it spins in the proper direction. Okay, it looks good. So I'm going to turn the printer off again. Now I'm going to run through the same process for the parts cooling fan, but when I cut the leads, I'm going to leave about 80 millimeters or so of the wire attached to the fan. I want to have enough to work with on the fan side of things. The parts cooling blower on the Ender 3 uses blue and yellow leads instead of black and red. Now I'll save you a little trouble by telling you now that the yellow lead is positive and the blue lead is negative. So when the time comes to get the crimped connectors into the little plastic housings, you can make sure that the positive and negative leads are consistent with what you already did on the hot end fan. And by that I mean if you put the red on the left side of the socket side of the hot end fan's power connector, You'll put the yellow lead on the left side of the socket side of the parts cooling fan's power connector. Consistency is key. Okay, I'll plug in the parts cooling blower and turn the printer on and make sure that it's working too. To turn the fan on, I need to navigate through the menus a little bit. Okay, good, the fan works. And now it's time to get the fan shroud put back together and then put it back on the printer. Now, this actually makes it kind of convenient to work on either the fans or the hot end because I can have the fan shroud completely detached from the X carriage. So I'll unplug both of the fans and I'll use the original screws to attach the new 4010 fan into the fan shroud. And I'll use the original screws to attach the parts cooling blower and its duct to the outside of the fan shroud. Now I can reattach the fan shroud to the X carriage. And with that done, I can plug in the power leads for the fans. Now I'll neaten up the wires just a little bit, and I'm going to get that mesh sleeve back down over all these wires and connectors. Now there's plenty of room in that mesh sleeve, so I'm just kind of tucking this extra wire up in there. So with all that mesh all the way back down to the hot end, a zip tie will keep it all in place. Oh, just a quick note about my choice of connectors. I know some people like to use DuPont connectors, and these JSTSM connectors are a little bulkier than the two-pin DuPont connectors, but the benefit over the DuPont connectors is that the JSTSM connectors are locking connectors. The DuPont connectors can be pulled apart pretty easily, but the JSTs will stay together. Now, by the way, since fans usually come in multi-packs, it might be a good idea to go ahead and crimp new connectors on the ends of the remaining fans in the pack. Just make sure that you keep your red and black wires consistent with what you did earlier. Then, the next time a fan fails, and it will eventually fail, you'll be able to simply disconnect the bad one and plug in a new one without a lot of fuss. So that was a pretty easy job, and this should make future maintenance tasks, at least those involving the hot end, a little bit easier. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this fan service episode. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. Now don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in this video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. Now I've got some other videos over here that you might want to take a look at too. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free and is an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.